Hi, I am Kakwa Bading, and I want to tell you why I wrote the song. I woke up around 3 a.m. and I fell into a trance. My eyes were drawn to my window, and I saw a huge angel suspended in the air. He took out a trumpet and began to blow loudly. Fear gripped my heart, and I began to tremble. Suddenly, a suction force sucked me into the skies. Many others were ascending to heaven as well. I cried as I thought about those who did not know Christ when the angel revealed that we were on our way to meet the Lord. Not long after, I gained consciousness and the Holy Spirit said to me, write this as a song. This is not just a song, it's a melodious prophecy. What if it is true that there is a heaven and a hell? What if it is true that we are in the last days? What if it is true that Jesus is the only way to heaven? What if it is true that your last day on earth is here? If I were you, I'd take my chance while earth remains If I were you, I'd take my chance while I have life If I were you, I'd take my chance before the half trumpet blows What will you do? That is why I lift my hand and heart to worship Him That is why I lift my hand and voice to praise His name That is why I lift my holy sacrifice to Him That's what I'll do That's what I'll do yeah, if I were you, I'll take my chance while I dream it. If I were you, I'll take my chance while I have a life. If I were you, I'll take my chance before the past trumpet blows. Take my chance while there is still a chance on earth
Center Headquarters, Tema Beach Road. You're welcome to today's service, and here is the Catch the Anointing Center news. You can now join in our services on TV on the following days and times. On Sundays on ATV from 11.15 to 12.15 p.m. The New Believer School comes up every Sunday right after the second and third service near the Info and Events Station. This is for all believers who want to be established in the Word of God and be properly integrated into the church. Online meetings are also available. Join in and lay a solid foundation for your Christian life. It's the prophetic family service with Bishop Kakobaden live at the Catch the Anointing Center headquarters off the Mungwa Tema Beach Road. This and every Wednesday from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. Come with your family and friends and start your day with a powerful and prophetic blessing. You don't want to miss this. Bands of Marriage. Frank Mensah and Belinda Alute are getting married on Saturday, 10th December 2022. The venue is the Catch Anointing Centre headquarters, Matthew Chapel, and the time is 12 noon. Francis Kwabna Setre and Vera Ochi are getting married on Saturday, 17th December 2022. The venue is the Catch Anointing Centre headquarters, Matthew Chapel, and the time is 1 p.m. Ebenezer Yaudako and Hilda Nyakwa Ureko are getting married on Saturday, 17th December 2022. The venue is the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Calvary Congregation, Kofridia, and the time is 11.30 a.m. Nana Kwesia Pia and Vanessa Na Odoe are getting married on Sunday, 18th December 2022. The venue is the Cash Generating Center Headquarters, Faith Chapel, and the time is 11 a.m. The Compassionate Ministry will hold its annual bazaar on Sunday, 18th December 2022 at the church premises. If you'd like to make a donation of any kind, be it clothing, food, or cash, Please contact 0244-638-381 or 054-819-4297. For all your pastoral care needs, counseling, events, or inquiries, please WhatsApp our pastoral care number on 025-700-3377. That's 025-700-3377. Thanks for worshipping with us. Please visit the Vision Bookshop for all your gospel literature materials. Pick from an array of best-selling authors like Dag Heward Mills, Kakwa Baden, Kenneth Hagen, Isu Danaba, and many others. There is also a well-stocked library service for children. Locate the Vision Bookshop adjacent to the church restaurant. Vision Bookshop, empowering you for the vision. The funeral arrangement for Opinion Samuel in Sia Nkrumah, father of our brother Emmanuel Nkrumah, is as follows. The real service takes place on Saturday, 10th December, at Otabel Krum, Aguna Suedu, at 8 a.m. Thanksgiving service follows at the Life and Salvation Church, Aguna Suedu, on 11th December at 8 a.m. Get ready for the Tongues of Fire prayer service, coming off this and every Friday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Love Chapel for all church members. Come and take your prayer life to new heights. See you there. All announcements should get to the info or event station by Tuesday evening or send via email to lcimorningstar at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, um, Prophet gave us an assignment last week to learn a song. And I'm sure most of you have learned it, so you can join us as we minister this song, Never Lost. Amen. He is my faithful Father, my anchor won't be moved. Storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with His word. Jesus has broken the curse. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray? I want us to, for a few minutes, pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to minister to us. Ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Our helper. Makato shebalaba lari andarabada. Yabo shetalama mabraha katalama shetalama setalama. Oh, mando sete bere 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 de kete bere bere gere. Malon shembrahan dale mene ne mere bere de gere gere. Yen dala la do bere 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 gere bere 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 de gere gere. Shalom mashata la ta 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 la baba. Oh, me kabo shabaran tolo bo se brehe kere de gere gere gere. Yebo shabala manda e manda la baba. Bala baba, mana la baba, rabala baba. Shabron da la ta la 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 lebe bende lebe bende lebe bende lebe bende lebe bende lebe bende lebe bende. Oh, maro shebrehe kata la baba. Kemu madali mo shebrehe da la la ge. Oh, ask the Holy Spirit to pour on us His Spirit. Ask God to pour the Holy Spirit on us in the name of Jesus. Nano ma shebrehe kata da la baba. Yela bo shebraha tala la babanda la baba Malon sebraha ndala babon ni me katanda Baro la la bazebrahe ketele le de 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 Mahadala baba Kalo shebraha ndala babo mandala baba Manda himo shebraha ndala baba 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 Ando mara bazebraha dada He is our helper Ask him to help us Mando Mariantala, Mabranda, la Babon, Shele Babanda, Elabo, Nimi Katanda, Oh, Miko Basha Kato Lemege. We need you, Lord. Limada Babara Babara Bala Baba, Mandala Bobara Baba Bala 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 Baba, Yabala Baba 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 Hibo Sabrahan Tala, Moshe Braheka Dala Baba Baba. Oh, yes, Lord. It is not by my might, O oh God. Oh, but by your spirit, O oh God. Le Maron Tala Masebrahan Dala Babanda. Oh, Mandom Brahan Dala Babonde. Le Beshe Braheke Lele Belege. Mamma Baba Baba. Malo Sebraha Tandala Baba. E Shibro Hika Tandala Boshe Braha Tala Lagaraga. Oh, yes, Lord. It's not by my power. And it's not by my. I'm not an intelligence. But for grace. It's not by my power. It's not by my power. This is all I can say. This is the figure of God in my life. And when people, and when people ask me, this is all I can say. This, this is the faith. It's not by my It's not by my and it's not by my I'm not a intelligent but for It's not by my power people 
all I can say. This is the finger. And when people ask me, and when people ask me, this is all I can say. This is the finger. That it is by your spirit, Lord. We thank you. Not by our might, not by our power, but by your spirit, O oh God. We pray that, O oh God, you will strengthen us. You will encourage us. Help us to be stronger, Lord. Help us to be stronger, Lord. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. We pray for your strength. We pray for the outpour of your spirit, Lord. Let your spirit be poured out on us, O oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise of God. Father, I ask you to help me. I pray, Lord, make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer. Holy Spirit, Make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer. And speak your words through me, O God. We pray, Lord, grant us faith to receive from you. Grant us faith to access the supernatural. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord. And I pray you make our hearts fertile, Lord, even to receive your word. Let your truth, O God, be made manifest and let your power of oh God fall on us O oh God let the power of the Holy Spirit energize us we thank you Jesus I give you praise O oh God oh yes Lord blessed be your name Amen, Amen. welcome somebody to church Tell the person it's good to, to be by you. Ask the person, how was your week? Amen. Okay. For a few minutes, we want to look through the scriptures. I want to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is a very important personality in the life of the Christian. And the Christian life is a supernatural life. It's a spiritual life. But we are human beings. We are flesh and blood. And it's very difficult to live a very successful Christian life without the Holy Spirit. In fact, you cannot. Amen. Amen. To be able to survive as a Christian in this life and to please God, you cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, even in the Old Testament, 
where the Holy Spirit was not given to everybody, the, 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 the Spirit of God is known to be the factor for the success of, I mean, key people in the Bible who did very well, like Joseph, like uh, David, Moses, and all the, and, and all, and all the, the prophets and the patriarchs. Hallelujah. They depended on the Holy Spirit for their success. And for even for you to become born again, you need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If anyone comes into Christ, when you become born again, it's the effort of the Holy Spirit that makes you become born again. It's the Holy Spirit who will even make you believe. Amen. So even the disciples walking with Jesus, listening to him and all that, by the time Jesus was dying, they were, they were not even born again. Hallelujah. Even though he had explained to them and all that, the Holy Spirit had to come in to come and help them to become born again. Amen. Because the Bible says in, in, in the book of Romans, maybe let me start from them. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And um, let's where it talks about the righteousness that comes from Moses. Verse 5. It says, For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in, the, in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the, the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. He was talking about the fact that when, even when Christ came, they, 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 they didn't understand and they couldn't believe the work of Christ. And so they were questioning themselves and asking that, how can God come from heaven? Who is going to bring him from heaven. And even if he comes from heaven, who is going to, and, and he dies, because they are read in the scriptures, talking about his death, his resurrection, and all that. But who is going to go down into the deep, which is hell, and bring him back? It, 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 something that they couldn't understand. Amen. And Paul was explaining and then verse 8, he said, But what's yet it? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So, he said, there are two things that have to take place for you to become born again. You must confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And then you must believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. So he, was, he started by explaining how he came down from heaven and how he's going to go down and who will bring him and all that. But he says that for you to become born again, you must believe in your heart. And you must also confess it. Amen. So, Peter, during um, um, the life of Jesus on earth, Peter even confessed to Jesus that you are the Christ. Hallelujah. 
But when Jesus died and resurrected, and the woman came to tell him, the Bible said he didn't believe it. They didn't believe. So at this time, he was still not born again because even though he had confessed, he didn't believe it. And the Bible says that he, they, they ran to, the, to, the, to the, uh, the tomb to check whether Christ was still inside or not. And if you read the account of John, John said that Peter ran quickly to, to check because he said, for yet they did not know or they did not believe that he would be raised from the dead. So even though he said it, he told Jesus himself that you are the, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He still didn't believe it in his heart. Hallelujah. So when Jesus died and came back, the Bible says in John, one of the days they were there and Jesus came in and he began to speak to them. Let's catch up on that action when Jesus had resurrected and started talking to the disciples. In John chapter 20 verse 19, John 20 verse 19, it says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed them, he showed unto them his hands and his, and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Then he said, Who, um, and he said, Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. So, you remember before Jesus left, Jesus had a, a, a conversation with them and told them that he was going to go. And when he goes, he will send another comforter who would guide them, who would lead them, and all that. Then he made a statement. He said that if he doesn't go, the comforter will not be given. So, Jesus had to die for the Holy Spirit to be sent onto the earth to begin the salvation that is of faith. Hallelujah. Up until then, if you had to be saved, you have to be saved through following the law. Hallelujah. You have to uh, um, um, follow all the commandments that God had given. And that was a difficult task. And nobody could do that. Nobody did it. Only one person was able to do that. That was Jesus himself. Hallelujah. But God gave all those commandments just trying to let us understand that we by ourselves, we cannot save ourselves. Hallelujah. And that we need somebody else for us to be saved. And, and, I, and I can understand. There are many things that if you want to do them and the Holy Spirit is not there, the effort that you put in and the results that you get, very little. Hallelujah. And you can see Maybe somebody else doing the same thing and is doing it very easily. 
Amen. So when Jesus breathed unto them and breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, that was when the Holy Spirit that brings conviction and makes you believe that Jesus had actually resurrected from the dead. That was when it dawned on them. And that's when they actually became what? Saved to be able to even preach the gospel. Hallelujah. So the work of the Holy Spirit in our life is very, very, very important, very crucial. Without him, you cannot even become saved. You can't become saved. So in the same Romans, Romans chapter 10, which I read, verse, verse 9, um, no, I think Ephesians, Ephesians rather, Ephesians chapter, chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 um, says that salvation is a gift. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. Can I, can I see that on the screen? Ephesians 2 5. He says, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. The next verse. And has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places. Hallelujah. For you to be saved, the Holy Spirit must give you even the gift of faith. Because the Bible says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You must hear the word of God to a certain level to even generate faith. But at the time when you are getting saved, sometimes it's, it's even what you have heard, you don't even understand it. But then you give your life to Jesus. At that point, what happens is that the Holy Spirit gives it to you as a gift. The Bible says it is the gift of of God. It is the gift of God. He gives a gift of faith and then he makes you be able to what? Believe it. For you to believe that Jesus actually died and rose from the dead, you can, you can, you can understand it mentally. And a lot of people, a lot of people are, are, are that way. You speak to them, they even understand it. They can even explain to you but for it to enter into your heart, for you to believe by faith, the Holy Ghost must give that to you as a gift. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is a very important figure in the life of every Christian. Why am I talking about it? Because I realize that we do many things, but we don't spend as much time looking for the Holy Spirit and trying to, 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 to find him and trying to make him the number one in our lives. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives you even the ability to believe to become born again. Without the Holy Spirit, one cannot even become born again. Amen. Then the second thing that the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit comes on us to baptize us. Jesus, in fact, John, John said that first. John said, um, he, he said, I baptize you with water, but there's one who is coming after me who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The next work of the Holy Spirit in our lives is the receiving of the Holy Ghost baptism or the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's a very crucial thing. In, in Acts, chapter, Acts chapter 1, when Jesus had resurrected, let's look at Acts chapter 1. Let's read Acts chapter 1, verse 1. 
You know, Acts chapter 1, verse 1, um, Luke writing, explains that even when Jesus resurrected from the dead, the instructions that he gave to his disciples, it was through the help of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, after resurrecting from the dead, he still needed the Holy Spirit to even do what he did. So he said, the former treatise or the former writings have I, have I made, O oh, Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Verse 2. And to the day in which he was taken up. So he's saying that when Jesus re- resurrected from the dead, and to the day he was taken up, all the things that he did, do you get it? Until the day that he was taken up. After that, he had through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Amen. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't used to see it this way. That even when Jesus came, he was still relying on the power of the Holy Ghost to even teach the disciples. It's amazing. Let's go on reading the same, um, from the same place. Acts chapter, maybe let me open it from my, Acts chapter 2. Okay. Sorry, Acts chapter 1. Yeah. Then verse, verse 3 says, to whom also he showed himself alive after his, after his uh, passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. So he was around for 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. All the things that he was talking about the kingdom of God, the Bible says that it was through the effort of the Holy Spirit. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Amen. Amen. Ye shall be baptized with the... He told them that don't try to go and start preaching. He said, wait. Wait. And there will come a time where you will receive the Holy Ghost before you even start to preach. Before that, he had, in John, he had told them that he breathed on them. They became born again. He said, now go out and go and preach. Then he tells them again that, relax, wait. You need the Holy Ghost. Is it not the same spirit that he breathed on them? Why is he now asking them that they should wait for the Holy Ghost again? The Holy Ghost at the beginning comes on us to make us born again. But when you have become born again, you are, if I should say, you are less powerful. You don't have a certain power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have a certain strength to even pray. You don't have a certain power to speak to somebody for the person to become convinced that really he needs to give his life to Jesus. You don't have a certain power to even understand the word of God. So you need the Holy Ghost to be able to what? Receive power. So if you read on in verse 8, in verse 8, Jesus said, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come on you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in, Samaria, in Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Then, in the book of Acts, we have the accounts of where uh, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, one day I was, I think I was, it was a book I was reading and then it's, um, it said, um, 
Jesus told them to tarry in Jerusalem. So it means that if you have to receive the Holy Spirit, you have to tarry in Jerusalem. <laughs> but I believe that if you look at the accounts in, 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 in the book of Acts, they didn't all have to tarry in Jerusalem. Amen. Jesus asked the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem because it was the first it was the first appearance of the Holy Spirit. It was the first time the Holy Spirit was going to be poured on the, the, the disciples that had become born again. So in Acts chapter 2, that was the first time that the Holy Spirit was poured up on them. And we all know the account. The Bible says that they were all together with one accord in the upper room. And then there came a, a, a sound as of a rushing mighty sound, uh, uh, um, um, uh, rushing ma mighty wind. And then it came upon them. Can we read that properly? Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them clothing thongs like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with thanks as the Spirit gave them utterance. When the Holy Ghost fills a person, he begins to speak with thanks. Amen. But there again, there are people who don't believe that speaking in tongues is a sign that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But if you look through the Bible, in all the, uh, uh, the accounts that they, they received the Holy Ghost, there were signs that proved that they were speaking in tongues. Amen. The next place is in, uh, I think, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Before Acts chapter 10 was the experience of um, um, Peter with Simon the sorcerer in Acts chapter 8. So let's read Acts chapter 8 first. Acts chapter 8 verse 14. Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 8 verse 14. This was, Peter had gone to preach. They had gone to preach. And there was a man who, the Bible says, he was, he was bewitching the people with sorcery. He was a powerful man. He had powers. People were going to him for different sort of powers. Consultations. Bigger. And today we have such, such powers around. And the Bible even says that when we get into the last days, there will be more of such powers. At first, we didn't used to see fetish priests making adverts. Today, when you watch the local televisions, oh, adverts. And they have power. Hallelujah. Even billboards. And they, and, 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 and they have power. People have gone to them and have received power and they are telling people and people are going for power. They have power. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. So there are people with, with operating with power. So we as Christians, we also need what? Power. So when Peter went to preach to them, the Bible says in Acts chapter 8 verse 14, now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. The agenda was very straight to the point. They went there to pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And, and I, am, I am excited with what the, the new believers people are doing. When we are, when, when, when we are having the water baptism, they take people through 
to receive the Holy Ghost baptism. Listen. We must be a church that preaches the Holy Ghost at our, in our Basenta meetings. We must encourage people to receive the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, we have so many Christians, we have so many people coming to church who are born again, but there is no power. When we meet, there is no power. Just a few people who have the power. I'm not talking about the tongues that you have learned, but one that you have actually become born again and you, 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 have, you have prayed to God and a certain power has fallen on you and you have received the Holy Ghost. I was said, they sent Peter and John who when they were come, prayed for them that they, they might what? Receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Which means that they were only baptized in the baptism of John. They took them to the, to the seaside and then uh, to the river Jordan and they baptized them. That's all. Verse 17. Then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Over here, it didn't say that after they received it, you know, they began to they, they, they began speaking in tongues. But the Bible says that Peter, the guy who was the sorcerer, who has now seen that there is somebody, somebody else, some people have come with another power. And they laid hands on the people and they began, they, they, they received the Holy Ghost. He offered them money, which means that there was something evidential. Hallelujah. There was something that you could see that after the people laid hands on them, something else came on them, something supernatural. And the guy, he believes in supernatural things. So he said, actually, give me that power too. So that means when I lay hands on people, they will also begin to speak in tongues. So even though the Bible didn't say that they, they spoke in tongues, there was something that they what? They saw. Hallelujah. Then in Acts chapter 10, in Acts chapter 10, is a story of Cornelius. The Bible says, Cornelius he used to pray. He used to even fast. Seeking the face of God. And you know, you can, be, you can be praying. You can be a prayerful person, but still not born again. You can even be fasting, but still not born again. And that's the case of this Cornelius. The Bible says that he used to pray and give alms. But because he was not saved, but God saw his heart that this guy, you know, he's a righteous person. He really wants to, 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 to know me. So God sent him to go and call Peter. And you know the story, they went to call Peter and all that. And when Peter came, he gathered all his household. I think the guy had been maybe preaching to them or sharing the word of God with them. So by the time Peter came, they were all eager. Amen. So in Acts chapter 10, verse 44, the Bible says, While Peter yet spake these things, at this time Peter had come and started talking to them. While Peter spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which had the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter. Because, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with thanks and magnify God. Hallelujah. So here it spells that clearly that after he came and he started talking, he, he, he didn't even pray for them. The guys were really waiting for something to happen to them. 
For you to receive the Holy Ghost, you must really be hungry for it. Hallelujah. You must be hungry for it. You must be ready for it. So, the Holy Ghost fell on them and they began to speak in thanks. Amen. The account of, of, of Paul also, Paul received the Holy Ghost baptism after he was prayed for. You know? But let's look, let's look at another account, maybe the last account, then I can move on. Let's look at um, Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. The last account where they received the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 19. Verse 1. Are you there? It says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And then he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him we should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they speak with thanks and prophesied. Hallelujah. When Paul met in those days, if Paul meets you and you are a Christian, one of the questions he asks you is that, have you received the Holy Ghost? And I, and I think that we should also be asking that. Hallelujah. Shepherds must be finding out from their members, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Sometimes if you don't ask, you will never know. There will be somebody around you. I don't know whether it's feeling shy or not, but there will be somebody in your ministry. He's been there for long, but he can't even talk about it. Paul asked, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, no, we have not even heard about it. We don't know what it is. What, what, what it is. So he, he, he started and he explained to them the reason for the Holy Ghost and why they needed it. And the Bible says that they were baptized, and after that, Paul laid his hands on them, and then he prayed for them, and they were baptized. Hallelujah. That is to say that one of the easiest way, if you look at the scriptures you have read, one of the easiest way to receive the Holy Ghost is when somebody lays hands on you and prays for you that you should receive the Holy Ghost. That's why sometimes prophets will, call, will make an altar call for those who have not received the Holy Ghost baptism. And then hands are laid on you. It is scriptural. Hallelujah. When hands are laid on you, the Holy Ghost is able to what? Come upon you. And I want to say that we that are born again and have received the Holy Ghost, we must lay hands on people. Amen. Yeah. We must... We, we must learn about it. We must go through the scriptures. We must have our scriptures. And then we must pray for people to receive the Holy Ghost baptism. If we don't, people will not receive the Holy Ghost baptism. But if we do, I'm telling you, people will receive the Holy Ghost baptism. There will be power in the church. Amen. So in all these accounts, the disciples prayed for people and they themselves also they received the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost comes, it gives us a certain amount of power. A set, it puts us on a certain level to operate. Amen. Now, after we have received the Holy Ghost, 
It gives us power to be witnesses. It gives us power to do, I mean, things for Christ. But there is yet another. Amen. Our daily life as Christians, we must grow and get to the point where now the Holy Spirit leads us. And, and, and that is the point where a, a lot of believers are not at that level. So we depend on, we, we depend on people. We depend on pastors. We can never take away the ministry of pastors and evangelists and prophets in our lives. No. We need them. But it must, it, it must get to a point where it's like it, it comes to a minimum. As a Christian, Jesus said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. As many as are led by what? The Spirit of God. Not by their pastor. Not by their church. Today, a lot of people go for consultations. Go for different church programs. It's good to go to, for, for church programs. But there are people, they, it's like they're looking for things. I remember when we used to come for turning points uh, many years ago in Collegono. That was the first time that I realized that it's like when a prophet finished ministering, he sits down and people come for Akwanchire. And when they are coming for what they call Akwanchire, it's like maybe they, they want to do a business move. So they are asking where to, maybe where to invest their money. Do you understand that? But the Bible doesn't say that your day-to-day -day and daily guidance should come from a prophet. No. Occasionally, yes. But you are not supposed to be like every decision, every move, you must ask for counsel for some prophet. And, the, and, 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 and sometimes when we do that, we also put pressure on certain men of God in that when you have come, they must also find something to what? To tell you. Yeah. You have come, so they must find something to tell you. So, nothing to say, crap, or he will find something to tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I had a story um, a certain guy who, what, I mean, believes in prophecies, every, every prophecy, and then some pastor went to visit him. They were chatting in the middle of the night. They were, they were outside Ghana. And the, the pastor who, who, who went to visit was from Ghana. And he was talking about some prophet here, that the prophet is what? They said, oh, so for my number, mommy. Give me his, the person's number. So he gave the number, and then he went to sleep. When he came back, at dawn, the guy was still in the living room and was on, 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 on call. And then he just uh, like sort of muted it and said, Hey, what's up? So by the time the guy went to sleep, till the dawn when the guy woke up, no, this guy has called that prophet and the prophet is sharing him in calm. From Asafu and the endayo, Hashem comes ah, meba meba, and went back to the call. Amen. No, 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 no. The Bible says, as I'm telling you, six hours of incumption. I mean. What time will, will, will God be telling somebody about you for six hours?
Amen. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You know, what makes it sometimes difficult for us to be led by the Spirit of God is that we, we, um, how do I say it? We, 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 we fail to sort of rely absolutely on the Holy Spirit. We tend to um, follow the, 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 the commandment, what is written in the Bible. It's okay to follow it. Do you get it? But Paul said something. He said that when he was talking about how to be, to be saved, you get, I think in, in Galatians and in James, let me just read that one. Um, Galatians chapter 10. Sorry, Galatians chapter 3 verse 10. He said, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all which is written in the book of the law to do them. Then he says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. What he's saying is that when you become born again, God himself knows that the commandments and the law, you can't follow it all. And he also knows that you don't even know it all. After 20 years, you will not know all that is in the Bible. And God is aware. But sometimes we feel that we must do something. When we are taught the word of God, when we are taken through things in the scriptures, we get to a point to feel that when you do this, then you get this. When you do this, then you get this. But to follow the Holy Spirit, you don't have to do anything to get anything. Are you getting my point? And you must get to a point where you must believe that even though you don't know the scriptures and you don't know some of the things that are there, he is still with you and he will still direct you. Yeah. Sometimes through the teachings, we, 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 we get to feel that there are some things, if you don't fast, it will not go. It's true. Jesus himself said things like that, you know. But when the Holy Spirit is leading you, he doesn't need any of this. And he says that when you actually bring that in, rather, you are trying to introduce a case. Because if you bring that in and there is something that you have not done, then that's it. But you must get to the point where you believe that whether you have done this or not, the Holy Spirit says he would guide you. He would do what? He would guide you. And what you do is that you must believe enough when you are taking steps, after you have prayed to him and you are taking steps, believe that he will guide you, he will direct you. Now, so pastor, what about, I, I, I've not heard from him. What should I do? When, when, when Moses was sent and, Moses, and, and God gave him the instructions, God told him that all that he had told him, he should do it. But then he said, after what I have told you, he said, do as occasion serves you. Which means that if you have not heard from God, use what the scripture says, number one, and then number two, use your common sense. Amen. Sometimes you are making a move and then you can feel that, no, this thing, but you want to, you want to make it like God will be on my side. I pray so God will be on my side. It doesn't work like that. The only time where you should be very bold is 
when you have heard clearly or when you have seen in a, in a dream, a vision, and it's very clear to you that God is leading me this way. But when you have not heard that, listen, behave like a normal person. Hallelujah. I said behave what? Like a normal person. Because even in your normal behavior, God is still in there to direct you. Yes. Oh, yes. God. He's still there. And I realize that sometimes when he's operating, he doesn't want the whole thing to look very... Occasionally, when he, when he wants you to actually see, he will. But sometimes they look very natural. Like last, I was talking about Abraham, when he sent the, 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 his servant. When the guy got to the well, he just prayed. After he prayed, he said, okay, the person will do this. But when even he, the servant, was re- 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 recounting the whole incident to Laban and, 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 and Rebecca's mother, he said, my master who sent me told me that an angel will go before me and will prosper my way. Which means that he believed that even was an angel that brought Rebecca his way. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Spirit is leading you, it's not everything that will look spectacular. Some of the things will look normal. But that is when you must be able to see and be able to acknowledge it. Because sometimes the way we operate is that if the thing doesn't look supernatural, if the thing doesn't look extraordinary, we don't attribute it to God. We attribute it to maybe it was a chance, it was lack of, no. You must be able to see in every, every as a Christian, in every move, every opportunity that come and give God the glory. The more you glorify him for the things that look ordinary, the more he sends in his help. And the more he sends in his help. Amen. So the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the Son. If you look at the, 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 the Greek for the sons there, it's talking about a matured son. Which means that you have moved from an ordinary Christian to become a son. Or a grown-up son who is now mature, who can now descend a lot of things. You get there when you begin to rely on the Holy Spirit and begin to seek for his counsel. Which means that everything, whatever you do, you must pray about it. You must ask. You must be conscious that the Holy Spirit is with you. Amen. Some of us, we, are, we, only, we only remember when maybe we have a problem. That's when we, re- we remember. Sometimes we become prayerful when we have a problem. No. Every moment of your life, you must have it in, at the back of your mind that the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. When you are driving, you must be aware that he's with you. Hallelujah. One of my favorite prayers when I'm traveling is I pray that, Lord, let, um, let angels move with me in an angelic convoy. And, and you know, that thing became very real to me one day when I was driving with Prophet. And he prayed. And we were, we were moving, I think, at some cabby. The, it was a truck. The guy saw this, this um, rope that they used to tie the big trucks, the one that has this winch on it. And so he got down to come and take it. So they, sl- they, they, they slowed down. So it was like an abrupt stop. So we also had to stop. When I stopped, the car behind me couldn't stop. And it just, bam, hit the back of our car. Hey! The, I mean, it shook us. As I was sitting there, I said, yeah, the car is spoiled. And then we got down. We went to the back of the car. Hey, you won't believe it. 
When I saw it was a 207, no, it was a Benz bus, yeah, this Benz bus. Uh, when I saw the front of the car, you know, coming down, I don't see the back of the Land Cruiser, but I can see the back of the car. When I saw the back of the car and how it was damaged, you get, and it's like a big car. So I'm like, yeah, 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 okay, the sport crowd. But you won't believe it that when we got to the back of the car, there was no dent. Then we, so we just sat back in the car and then we, 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 we took off. And then the prophet said, Charlie, the engine was at the back. He took the shock for us. Then I said, ah. Do you, do you understand that? Immediately he attributed it to an angel there who had actually taken the shock. But somebody else, were, and I believe maybe up until then, maybe I would have said, Charlie, my lucky you. Do you see the difference? Somebody will say, oh, my lucky. Somebody will say, oh, somebody has helped me. You are looking for, uh, for somebody to help you, maybe in your school, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody brings help. You see that somebody has helped you. But you must be, as a Christian, you must begin to attribute every single move of yours that the Holy Spirit has what? Helped you. Because if somebody helps you and you acknowledge the help, the person feels like, I mean, the next time he wants to help you, it's even easier. The person will even want to help you more. Yeah. I remember one day my wife was saying that um, if, if, she, if you give, if you, if you give let's say, a, a dress to somebody, and you see the person wearing it, you know, it's like you are happy. Do you get it? Because she was, she was saying that, oh, she has given somebody something, the person has not worn it, so all money will be a bill. Do you get it? That's all. It's a bill share now, Do you get it? But at least it gives in the mind that if you give somebody something, and the you see the person using it and is happy with the thing, if you have another one, say, oh, Charlie, I have another one, cradle. Let me bring it to you. Many of us, the Holy Spirit has done things in your life. Since you became born again, he is with you. He is making the decisions. He is bringing the help, but you don't acknowledge it. Even if your father pays your school fees, don't think that your father is a good father, so he has paid your school fees. Yeah. Even your father buys a car for you. Don't think that, oh, because your father has money. A lot of people have money, but they have not bought cars for their children. Oh, yeah. A lot of people have money. I mean, money. They can buy wild cars, but they have not bought it. A lot of people can do things for you, but they have not done it. It's because the Holy Spirit has not what? Moved. But if you begin to acknowledge him, if you begin to what? Acknowledge him. If you begin to what? Acknowledge him. Proverbs says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Until you begin to acknowledge him, he will not direct your path. And he, when, when he says he shall direct your path, he didn't even say that he will even tell you what to do. He will direct your path. Many, many of the, of, of the things the Holy Spirit does for us, he doesn't even say anything. He won't say anything. He will just direct. It's time we believe that our very life is a supernatural life and that there is a God who is moving who is acting and who is doing things. When you think that way, you will begin to acknowledge him. And as you acknowledge him, the Bible says, he shall direct your path. I see God directing your path in the name of Jesus. 
And this morning is an anointing service. My assignment is very simple. I want to pray over the oil and ask the Holy Spirit to direct our paths. Hallelujah. Difficult times, so whatever times it is, the Holy Spirit can direct your path. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Prophet prayed for us and said, this year, he said, the Holy Spirit said, we should invest. It's a serious thing to, 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 to do. Hallelujah. But where do you invest? My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will, 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 will direct our path. It's not every time that he will give us a dream or, or say something specific. You will be there and somebody will come and say, let's let, go and see me off here. But by the time you come back, you will see that God has directed you through that. Just go and see him here. I believe in the scriptures. So I said that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. I mean, the many times we lean on our own understanding. But in all your ways, not some of them, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Hallelujah. Shall we stand to our feet? Ushers, can you bring the oil? And we are praying that the Holy Spirit will direct our paths. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Mm. There is a redeemer Jesus God God Messiah Ooh, you are. There is a Redeemer There is a Redeemer Jesus Yeah. 
Father, in the name of Jesus. Your Holy Spirit to direct us, Lord. Your Holy Spirit to lead us. I pray over this oil, Lord. I pray that, Lord God, as we anoint ourselves, let your Spirit lead us. For as many as are led by your Spirit, they are the sons of God. Help us. Help us. Help us to acknowledge you. Help us to know when you are moving. Help us. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you would direct our paths. Grant us directed paths, Lord. Where we need to hear your voice, let us hear it. Where we need to feel it in, in, in our hearts, let us be able to do that. I pray, Lord, by this oil, let the work of the Holy Spirit be rekindled. Oh, let the work of the Holy Spirit be rekindled. We receive your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus fall on us afresh, O oh God. Direct us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Even you, when you were here, the Bible says, how God anointed you with the Holy Ghost and with power. And you went about doing all the good. We pray anoint us with the Holy Spirit anoint us afresh with the Holy Spirit let it affect our Christian life let it affect our secular jobs let it affect our homes let it affect our marriage let it affect our business let it affect our investments let it affect even the raising of our children we pray for the influence of the Holy Spirit upon our lives in the name of Jesus by this oil oh God open our eyes open our understanding in the name of Jesus and direct us Lord let there be a new wave of your direction let us be even sensitive to you more than we have ever been every day may we feel you by our side may we hear you May we sense you. We pray for the Holy Spirit because we cannot make it without the Holy Spirit. We pray over this oil, Lord. Let your power fall in Jesus' mighty name. Your work. Can, can I have the pastor's help? Oh, thank you, oh my Father. Thank Oh, my Father, forgive me. Happy Olivia, can you help us?
is a redeemer. There is a redeemer. Jesus God on side. Precious love of God. Stand to your feet, lift up your hand and begin to pray. La moshe brahata la mabrahana la baba. Kadu mashe brahata la babuma na la baba. Oh, we need your direction, Lord. We need your influence, Lord. Oh, pray. Le moshe brahata na moni brahima kala la baba. Mande de sete de 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 de. E kalu mashata. E kato la mashete de de. Le mada la baba. Oh yes, Your hands lifted. Oh yes, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let our walk with you 
continue to be supernatural. This morning we ask you to lead us. Lead us. And may we be able to see all your directions, Lord. We don't need to hear before we even follow your directions. Your word says that when we acknowledge it, you will direct our path. We pray for directed paths. Sometimes it's difficult to hear, but we pray for directed paths. In the times that we live in, we pray for directed paths. In the times where the love of many will grow cold, we pray, not us. May we be on fire. May we be on fire for you. And we pray that, oh God, you bless us. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes, Lord. Open our eyes by this oil. Open the eyes of our understanding. Grant us wisdom in the name of Jesus. We thank you for hearing our prayer. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. It's time to give a good offering. You want to take a very good offering as we close quickly? Mobile money numbers are on the screen. If you want to give via mobile money, the numbers are on your screen. Amen. Lift up your offering and let's pray. I hope you're giving a good offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We pray over our offering. We ask for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. I just quickly take the offering. Your tithe is ready. Please come quickly and let's pray. Your tithe is ready. You put your tithe in an envelope. You write your phone number on it. Your phone number is your tithe number. Your tithe is ready. Come and let's pray. It's coming up to me. It's just an Father, we thank you. Thank you for our tithes that we are bringing to you. I pray, Lord, for directed paths as they pay their tithes. This week, may somebody here receive a supernatural direction. Direct your people in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Good. Find a basket and put it inside. Oh, hallelujah. With a new melody. Hallelujah. It's all I need when I think of your goodness, your love for me. Oh, the joy. Oh, the joy of my salvation. 
He's coming back to me. It's just a good hallelujah with a new melody. And I'm singing. I'm singing. Okay. If you have an envelope from um, last, the last convention we had, or any form of envelope, can you please bring it? You have maybe one of our convention envelopes. You took an envelope, you pledged during the convention, and your envelope is ready. Can you please bring it quickly? Thank you. I see you. One or two people with the envelope. Yeah. Bring, come in. Bring it. Bring, bring the envelopes to me, please. And I'm singing. Oh, 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 oh. I'm singing. Oh, 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 oh. We got together. We got together every Wednesday night. About 30 teenagers. My friend Josh bought a cheap guitar He barely knew how to play He wasn't putting on a shoe Wasn't well known Wasn't tired of me famous Are we clear? But we sure Okay So can the pastors come for the baskets? It's all I need When I think of your goodness your love for oh the joy oh the joy of my salvation is coming back to me it's just an old convention 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 whoa on the 15th 16th and then the 18th of this month we have a very powerful man of God visiting us. Archbishop Charles Ajin Asari. Very, 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 very anointed man of God. Been in ministry for many years. Hallelujah. He carries a unique anointing. And um, you want to save the date. You want to invite people. You want to talk about it. And it's our Thanksgiving convention. So we, 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 are, we are going to say thank you to God for taking us through the year. Amen. So save the date. Remember, that's our Thanksgiving convention. Then next, next week, Sunday, the all-to-all -all theme. When we say all-to-all -all theme, there is um, um, Bishop Doug. All Bishop Doug's books, the materials, will be downloaded onto your phone. So if you want a book to read, you can just have it on your phone. Do you get it? So the team will be here next Sunday and they will be operating from the Love Chapel and some of the other smaller chapels. But you need to bring your tablet to receive it. Do you get it? If you want to receive it on your phone, make your phone ready. Make sure that if you don't have space, you have cleared space. And, and, and bring your tablet. It's a blessing. Amen. If you have an external drive, you can also bring it. Hallelujah. And then you will receive the message. Amen. Wow. Very, very, very important. You get they, are, they are coming all the way for us. You get it. So they shouldn't come and it's like we, we don't want it. And Maybe the last time they came, you, 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 you went for them. But there are new books. Do you get it? So I believe we must all be ready. I'm saying it because some of us have it already. I, I have the all to all. But I don't have the new books. So I'm going to make myself ready when they come. Amen. Wow. On Friday, we had a very powerful wedding. Tracy. How? It's been um, two days, right? And I think your, your chapel pastor wants to know what happened. 
I've already informed him. <laughs> what? If you want to know what happened, go and ask LP Fosti. <laughs> I believe they had a very wonderful wedding and um, I want to pray with them. Father, we thank you for a successful marriage that you are taking them through. I pray you take them the distance. Be gracious to them. Help them. I pray may they enjoy their marriage. I pray for a lot of enjoyment in this marriage. I also pray for a lot of money in this marriage. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So you can go up there and take some more pictures there. Those chairs are for married couples. When you marry, then you take a, 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 a picture in it. Prince. Prince, Pastor Bo said he has donated the chest to you, so that's why he has not taken it. So we are waiting for you to come and take them. Do you know, Prince, when you see him, tell him that the chairs are waiting for him. We want somebody to take them, so now it has fallen on Prince. Amen. Priscilla agrees with me. Okay. If you are going to celebrate your birthday this week, this week, maybe um, from tomorrow up till next Sunday is going to be your birthday. Can I have some envelopes? You want to take an envelope, but we also want to pray for you. So your birthday is coming up. You can take an envelope to give a special offering on your birthday and also come and come and receive a prayer. Anybody here, you're celebrating your birthday this coming week. Yeah. Here you come. Happy birthday. Hey. Freeman. <laughs> Charlie How. Would there be a party? Okay. I'm asking so that you invite me now. When I when you see me then you say me that you didn't invite me. Okay. It was good to see you. Pick one and give. Why you forgot your birthday or what? Okay. 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 Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for all those who are celebrating their birthday in the coming week and those who join who already have ce celebrated their birthdays but are given to you. I pray, Lord, bless them. I pray, Lord, for protection in the coming year May you receive supernatural protection in the name of Jesus. I pray for protection in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may take your seat. Okay. Okay. Then finally, um, on Wednesday, we'll have our uh, pro uh, prophetic family service. And then... Um, on Friday, Friday there will also be an all night, the Tongues of Fire um, prayer meeting. Sorry, it will be a, it will be a prayer meeting this time. We had a, we had an all night last last Friday, but this Friday it will be from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Shall we stand to our feet as we close our service? Share the grace with your neighbor. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion. Amen.
Amen. Hold on one minute. I think I forgot. If today is the first time you are worshiping with us, or you, you, you want to give your life to Jesus, we want to receive you. Maybe today is the first day you are, you are, you are worshiping with us. Can, can you give me a wave? Please, no, no movement, please. We are closing right now. Do you have any visitors here? Today is the first time you are worshiping with us. Can we, can we see you? We want to welcome you. We want to give you a special Catch the Anointing Center. Good, I see those hands that are waved over there. Kindly, please come forward. Come forward. Come, 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 come. I want to meet you. Please come. Today is the first time. Please come. Please come. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You are special. Please come. You are our special guest. Thank you. You are welcome, madam. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Is there anybody who, who you want to give your life to Jesus? Any of you want to give your life to Jesus? Yeah. Okay. What about you? You want to give your life to Jesus? Yes. Okay. So those of you who want to give your life to Jesus, have you seen the lady over there? We, yeah, go to her. She has something very special for you. Those of you who want to give your life to Jesus. One, two, yeah, go. Good. And then the rest of you. Our sister here. Our sister. Our sister here. Very good. Tell your neighbor this week, expect the Holy Ghost to direct you. See you. See you on Wednesday.